What you just saw was one of these flashes able to keep up with my camera at 9 frames a second. However, only one of them could do that, and I'll tell you which one it was in a moment. As a word of caution, make sure you don't touch any of the uh, electrical contacts inside if you ever open a camera flash. There's a capacitor in here and it's charged to several hundred volts. I've seen them charged over 300 volts. And let me tell you, touching 300 volts is not fun. Ask me how I found out. I'm just lucky it wasn't more serious than that. 300 volts can kill you easily. And don't even touch the ends of the flash tube. They have capacitor voltage on them at all times and it takes several days for a capacitor to lose its charge. So if you ever open a flash, always assume that there's several hundred volts inside. So I had to open up my Godox V862 flash. The head stopped zooming. It looked like it overheated. I don't know if you can see it, but the uh, plastic is bulging and there's also bubbles. This happened after shooting continuously for several hundred frames, but not at full power. The subject was just maybe six feet in front of me. Looks like they could have used a more heat resistant material. And while I have these two flashes here, let me tell you a little bit about this other flash I got. I got this because I didn't realize it was going to be so easy to fix the zoom head. So. I went ahead and bought this Pixel Flash. They're both pretty much exactly the same size, so that's the size is no different. The batteries are slightly different. The capacity difference is 22 watt hours on the Godox battery and 23.68, so the Pixel battery is slightly uh, higher in capacity, but in practice it probably won't make a difference. I'm just going to point out a few similarities and differences between these two flashes. On the Godox flash, we have a, uh, a dial and a switch to turn it on and off. However, it uses a screw type uh, lock to lock the, the flash onto your hot shoe. On the Pixel flash, it uses a similar lever system as the one you would see on a Nikon flash, which I prefer because it's so much easier to flip just a lever and then your flash is on. And one good thing about the Pixel Flash is, see there's a lock button on the lever, so you, you can't accidentally undo the lock. Another feature I like about the Pixel Flash is that it has a headlock. Quite frequently when I'm using the Godox Flash on my camera, it will go to this t down tilting position. So this is straight ahead and this is down. So that won't happen on the pixel flash because the headlock locks it in the, in the uh, forward facing position. I like that they both use a switch to turn on because that's a lot easier than pressing a button for even a fraction of a second and wait for it to turn on because I can just flip it off and it's off. The thing about these two flashes is that it makes that head zooming sound when you first turn it on and if you do it in a quiet place everyone will stare at you. There is one annoying thing about the Godox flash that has bothered me. It has a laser autofocus assist system and I found that sometimes that laser pattern is visible in my own pictures taken with the camera using this flash. So sometimes it doesn't shut off the laser while you're taking the picture, which I find is kind of odd. And just in general, I don't like the laser focus system because for some reason it just doesn't seem to be as accurate. And also it ruins other people's pictures. So if you're at like a wedding and you're taking lots of pictures, it'll project this laser pattern on whatever you're taking a picture of. And if other people are taking pictures, you'll see the laser pattern ruining other people's pictures. So which leads me to one thing I really like about the Pixel Flash is that it has a white LED light on there that you can use. All you have to do is just press this button and turn it off, press it again. 
So that's probably how I'm going to use it, is to use it to help me autofocus in almost total darkness. Or I could use it to record videos. So the good thing about both of them is that you can disable the laser autofocus assist light. Another interesting feature I found on the Pixel Flash is that you can adjust the evenness of the illumination. It has three different settings. You can access it by pressing the uh, ILLU button. If you see down here in that bottom icon, you can see that it has the center, standard, and wide. And if you press function and scroll down there, you can turn the wheel and it, as you can see there, it tells you evenness, center, and standard. So some other minor things. Uh, to access the custom functions of the Godox flash, you just hold down this button and then you get the menu and then you can scroll through it by turning this. On the pixel flash, all you have to do is press this button and you're already there. And those are the settings. One thing I like about the power button on the Pixel Flash is that there's a lock position so that you can set it to lock and then you don't have to worry about accidentally changing a setting if you press a button. Okay, I just discovered a con of this Pixel Flash that's big enough that I think I'm going to return this flash. So I have my camera here set to continuous advance and watch what happens with a subject this close to the camera. See, the flash is not firing at every exposure. We're running at about 7 frames a second right now. And the exposure is also very uneven. It's like all over the place. Now let's see what happens when we use the Godox flash with none of the camera settings changed. It's firing at every single frame. And now let's see how the exposure is. The exposure is perfect in every single capture. So as much as I love the lever, the lock, the LED light that I can use for videos and autofocus, the head lock, I don't think I can keep this flash because when I need to use it in those certain special circumstances that will require demanding use, I don't think it's going to be able to perform. And even if you don't think you'll ever use continuous shooting with a flash, it can affect it if you take two pictures in rapid succession. The first picture, it'll flash, but the second time you press the shutter button, it won't flash. Now just for fun, let's see what happens with the Godox flash when we set the camera to 9 frames a second. Now look at that, every frame perfectly exposed. So that's it for now. If you have any questions, feel free to leave comments. Thanks for watching.